Thank you very much, everyone. Please, please be seated. Right. Um, welcome to the uh, council meeting of Tuesday, the 18th of July, 2023. As you will have noticed, our vicar uh, is indisposed and has been unable to attend. So we're just, well, we're about actually on schedule now. So um, we'll press on. And uh, I'd like to welcome our guests this evening at the back of the room. Um, obviously, I welcome all our councillors. And I must tell you that, unfortunately, we're not currently being live streamed on YouTube, as would normally be the case. This is something to do with um, YouTube, I think. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be recording the meeting, and then we'll upload it straight afterwards. So um, I'm sure um, many, many, many um, TV viewers will be uh, desperate to know what's going on this evening, and uh, we'll be tuning in a bit later on. Right, okay then, pressing on, apologies for absence. Um, I've had apologies from councillors Marie Bailey, Sarah Daniels, Danny Cook, Richard Kingston, Peter Thurgood and Jeremy Oates. Um, do we have any other apologies? Ben. Thank you. Um, Councillor John Wade is running slightly late. He's on his way back from London. So he may be here about half past. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Dean. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, apologies from Ben Clark, Councillor Ben Clark, and also um, Councillor Liam Bone is running late. He's on his way back from work. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. There are no more. OK. We'll move on to agenda item number two, which is declaration of interest. Uh, does anyone have any items to declare? Okay, thank you very much. Agenda item number three, to receive any announcements from the Mayor, Leader and members of the Cabinet or the Chief Executive. Um, I have one very brief um, piece just to like, tell you that um, my very first mayoral charity event was held last week, well, the tail end of last week, um, and um, it was um, a Motown disco at Bowl Hall Manor Club, and it raised £300, which is now lodged into the mayoral charity and has given us a brilliant kickoff. I must put on record my thanks to the organiser, Lee, uh, Lee Smart, who, um, who did a fantastic job and to Andy, the um, manager at um, Bowl Hall Manor, who gave the venue free of charge and enabled us to uh, get off to that sparkling start. So thank you to them. Um, if anyone has any or, um, events or money raising things that they can think of that they would like to um, add to the mayor or charity, um, I will ask um, Tracy, again, if she could, to put on the, um, to send out a, 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 an email detailing the bank details to which any funds could be deposited uh, into the mayoral charity. Um, it would be fantastic if anybody can come up with some good ideas that would uh, give that a good boost. Thank you. Right, moving swiftly on to the leader of the council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have nothing to report, really, so it's over to you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. The leader. Good grief. <laughs> Getting above your station for a moment there. Um, it's very unusual, but uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Right, any members of the Cabinet, do you have anything that you would wish to, any announcements you wish to say? Okie doke. And we'll now move on to the Chief Executive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, I do have an announcement, uh, probably quite a life-changing one for me. Um, today I've formally given notice to um, the Leader of the Council of my intention to retire as of the 31st of March next year. So I think getting to, uh, to 60, it's, it's about the right time for me to go personally. Um, lots of good things have happened um, in, in my tenure at Tamworth, and I've been here about 20 years now. So uh, it's, it's still a great place. I've still got a passion for it. And I haven't gone yet. 
um, but trying to give um, members, you know, plenty of time to, uh, to to choose a successor, and uh, you know, really believe in the place, and uh, you know, we're we're going for. So, but uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Paul Turner. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say that uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, Andrew, um, we'd like to thank you sincerely for your service. I know you've not gone yet uh, and your continued support for the next few months until you do decide to sail off to the Isle of Wight or wherever you're going. So um, on behalf of all of us, I think we'll all agree you've been a great servant to uh, Tamworth and we thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Councillor Dean. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm quite surprised, Mr Barrett, and really, it, it'll be a shame because with my new group, we're all just getting used to it. We're so thankful for the, the support that you and your team have given, so you will be sadly missed, really missed, but I hope that you will enjoy the next few months and that my team don't make it too, too much of a struggle for you before you go. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Councillor Pritchard. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I just add my thanks to, to that of everybody else, to uh, Andy Barrett. Um, having worked with you for those 20 years, you are very much a, a can-do officer. Um, I remember many times over the years I'd come from a meeting with you and you'd say, Rob, we've got a problem with this. But I've already solved it, so can you sign this piece of paper to make sure it was legal? Um, you, are, you have always been that sort of officer. Uh, credit to the town. You know, when there was a problem, you dealt with it. Uh, you always kept the members informed, and it has been an absolute pleasure to work with you. So, most definitely, uh, retirement gain is Tamworth's loss. Thank you. Councillor Clements. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, Councillor Pritchard has kind of stole my thunder as he's the longest-serving councillor left here now. Um, I'm slowly behind him. Um, Andrew, I just want to say that, you know, your door has always been open. You've always been... Um, your passion for Tam was shone through right from when I've known you for the last 13 years. I can't go back 20 years because I'm not quite that old yet. Um, but I want to thank you for the support that you've you've given myself. When I was, um, you, you came as chief executive as I was finishing my mayorality. And the support that you've given to the cabinet, to, to me when I sat on the cabinet only 12 months ago, um, it's all right. your, your passion for Tamworth will, will always shine through. And if you do go to the Isle of Wight, I'm sure that you'll still be visiting us in the near future. So thank you. Enjoy your retirement. Enjoy the bike, I believe, that you've got, that you're going to be out on that open road. Um, and hope the back holds up, because I empathise with the back pain. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Clements. Councillor Doyle. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I basically agree with every, all the comments that have been made in the chamber tonight. Um, I've been a councillor for approximately 12 years and my first uh, portfolio uh, was with Andrew. Uh, you've been a good friend. I have a great deal of respect for you. Um, and I will really miss you. Uh, but I hope you have a very long and happy retirement. Fortunately, you're not going until March, so I'll see you before then. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Right. Uh, personally, on a, on a note from uh, from myself, on uh, uh, from a civic perspective, uh, may I just um, again echo the thoughts and um, compliments that everyone else has said by saying that you are an ex an exceptional chief executive and you've served Tamworth so well for so many years, and you will be hugely missed not only for your wisdom and your advice, but for your personality and your courteous and gracious character, which we all admire. And, um, well, that will be irreplaceable. Thank you. Right, OK, back to on to track to item four, which is question time. We have no questions from members of the public, but we have six questions from members of the council. Um, right. 
I'll start with um, the first question um, was under procedure rule one. Councillor Jeremy Oates was due to ask the leader of the council um, a question, but unfortunately, Councillor Oates is indisposed. So we will um, ask for the, um, the council leader to give a written response in the fullness of time. Uh, questions from members number two. Um, as questions number two and four are of a similar nature, the portfolio holder, Councillor uh, Cooper, will answer both together, but ask each other councillor if they have a supplementary. And the first question is from Councillor Gareth Coates. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you to the Leader of the Council for keeping his word. Um, on the first bin question I asked on the 14th day, it was actually uh, put in the location. So, you know, I appreciate you keeping your word. And like I say, that bin now is full every week. Um, so it was a, a good addition to the area and it is keeping it clean. Um, basically, it's another a bin question. I'm going to go for two for two. So obviously, to uh, Councillor Cooper. Um, uh, is it possible to either get an additional bin or a bigger bin outside the shops on Lake and Heath? Um, there is currently only one bin outside there, and this is normally full after two or three days. Uh, during May half term, there was just litter everywhere, and I was spending a lot of time, as well as the shop owners, picking it up and either putting it in black bags ourselves or trying to cram it in the bin. Um, obviously, uh, there is a park nearby, and over during the summer, it's going to probably be a lot worse. Is it possible to get a bigger bin? Um, and would the council uh, be willing to put one there? Can I suggest the Derby E double slimline bin? It's made by the same current manufacturers the council use. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coates. Um, if I can now ask uh, Councillor <laughs> Craig Adams to ask his question and then ask Councillor Cooper to reply to both. To, for, to promote litter-free residential areas, what the environmental health and community partnership provide looking to increase the number of bins throughout residential areas? Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, I'll ask Councillor Cooper to respond. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, as always. Um, there are currently over 800 litter bins in the borough and Tamworth Borough uh, Councils remains committed to its priorities and we are working hard to, to keep Tamworth clean and tidy. Installation of new bins are generally carried out September through to March every year. This allows us the opportunity to, uh, to review and establish whether litter bins are in the right spot for meeting the needs of residents and visitors or if their locations need to be adjusted. For general information, a standard litter bin costs £310 each. Uh, with an additional £100 installation cost. So it's important that we have tested the need by monitoring the demand in each area so that new litter bins are installed in hotspots and those areas where litter accumulates. This is an ongoing process, but we also urge the public to do what's right and help us to uh, keep Tamworth clean and green. Uh, the message is really simple. Dispose of waste re responsibly using the uh, litter bins provided or take it home. Uh, help us by not dropping litter in the first place. And I have to emphasise this. Um, for me, it is about dealing, the, tackling the problem at source. Essentially, if people do take their litter home, um, then we, we won't have to be outlaying these costs in order to install bins and then keep maintaining them, keep them, keep them on top. Um, and bins will... For, for me, bins are always allocated by a case, case, case by case basis. So ab absolutely, we'll, I will uh, instruct the officers to take a look at both of these locations to see if, if they do want larger bins or what. But I, I do have to stress that it is taken on a case by case basis. And the, um, the emphasis has definitely got to be on the public to uh, dispose of their own litter. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Um... Councillor Coates, do you have a supplementary? 
Yes, Mr. Mayor. I mean, if it helps the council, I honestly don't mind paying for the bin myself. So if it's £310, I don't mind paying it. So if it is a cost issue more than anything, please let me know and I have no issue paying for it to help the area. Thank you. Councillor Cooper. Yeah, it's not a direct cost issue for that single bin. The cost is the is basically um, setting in uh, setting an open door policy to having a bin provided absolutely everywhere. Uh, if we did have a magic money tree grown outside, then uh, we, we could we could supply bins to every corner of Tamworth. Um, I think I think the emphasis has to be on people doing the right thing with their own litter and and taking it home or putting it in the bins provided. Um, it was just being responsible for it. But uh, thank you for your offer, but uh, the cost isn't the single bin, it's the overall uh, cost. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Adams, would you like to give a supplementary? Yeah. Um, it will rely on people doing the right thing. Make it a lot easier to get a bin nearby. Can we actually have to survey on where the man will be saw in where different areas? Not that at SOPs or boat sightings, but at or near people's homes, because there seem to be a lot of things in a lot of areas. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the supplementary. Uh, yes, uh, of course, we can. We're always reviewing our strategy with bins. Uh, as I said in the in the in the response, there are eight, over eight hundred bins in the borough. The borough isn't a big borough; it's a small borough with uh, over eight hundred bins with ongoing costs to uh, empty those bins and install them and not or, or not keep them. Um, <laughs> But we always, uh, as the response said, we, we always t take a look at our bin strategy and see where, where and when the, the right bins need to be in the right place at the right time. So um, absolutely, as I said before, bins are taken on a case-by-case -case basis. So if there is a, if there's a certain area that you would like to see a bin, then uh, let us know and, we, and we, can, we can sort of take that judgment on it. And it might mean that we, we move a bin that's not being used from somewhere else and we put it to where it needs to be used. Absolutely, we're not, we're not saying that, but um, we, we'll look at it from a case-by-case -case basis. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Right, we'll revert now back to question number three, which is... Um, Councillor Gareth Coates would like to ask the portfolio holder for operations and finance, Councillor Thomas Jay, a question. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm going to be known as the rubbish councillor at this rate. Um, uh, I get a lot of residents um, asking why we use a blue bag and a blue bin. Um, I'm just wondering if the council can explain once again uh, why this is and why we don't have just one blue bin like other, um, other councils. Thank you. Councillor Jay. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Councillor Oates, for the question. Uh, Coates, sorry. Um, obviously, any change is always uh, a bit of a shock at the start, but the system seems to have um, uh, embedded in now. We're getting good results, so I'm happy to answer the question. Um, the single blue system is certainly easier. I think we can all agree with that. <clears throat> um, however, there are a number of factors as to why the current system of, of a bin for glass, cans, and plastic and a separate bag for paper and card was introduced. The recycling markets have changed dramatically over the last few years. The material reprocessors have raised the bar significantly in terms of what they will and won't accept. So to produce good quality and price effective recycled product, the reprocessors need good quality products from us. Um, you'll be aware of the many debates we hear around needing to produce high quality recycling material that can be reused. Um, as well as perhaps the expression wish cycling where residents are recycling materials which are not able to be processed, they're not reading the labels, and then they're actually contaminating the whole load. Unfortunately, some residents um, were not using the blue bin correctly and putting residual waste in the blue bin, including, believe it or not, nappies, food, animal waste, etc. And this resulted in whole lorry loads of recycling being rejected at the reprocessing plant. A small amount of contamination like that which could sometimes be caused by one resident, would lead to the whole load being rejected and up to 10 tonnes of recyclable material being sent for incineration at a cost of around £3,000 to, to the taxpayer. Okay? During the final year of the old service, rejected loads cost the service and taxpayers over £300,000 and significant tonnages of quality recyclable materials were lost. Since a new service is introduced, only one load has been rejected. That's, that's a fantastic uh, achievement. And this was not caused by a resident on this occasion, but due to an operational area within the team. 
As well as the lower quality of products we were producing, there would have also been significant costs to our residents to remain with the single bin system. When the council went out to tender for a new disposal contract last year, the gate fee we would have to had to pay the reprocessors to stay with the current single stream methodology had trebled compared to the existing arrangement. This would have resulted in an additional 1.2 million per annum cost pressure for the joint waste service, which I think we can all agree that is unaffordable and not the right outcome for, for residents. The reason the gate fees have risen dramatically for single stream materials is because the quality of the material produced is of a lower quality. To combat the two issues, Litchfield and Tamworth have made the decision change to, a, to change to a dual stream collection service. This followed the lead of other authorities in Staffordshire, such as Newcastle under Lyme, East Staffordshire and Stafford at the time. Um, and the, to introduce a dual stream collection service with a bag being provided for paper and card. The feedback from these authorities showed that the move to dual stream collections improved the quality of the materials and as a result the gate fee is a lot lower and we've seen that in our results that I explained. It's much harder to hide unwanted materials in a bag and the bins are less full thus making it easier to check them. For your information, everyone's information, Canuck and South Staffordshire also made the change to a dual stream system last year for similar reasons to Litchfield and Tamworth and also all Shropshire councils and other neighbours have that same system so it is becoming the norm. The new system also increases the capacity residents have for recycling. So in the old system, there was, there was 240 litres in a standard bin. Now we have 240 litre bin and the 72 litre bag. So it's actually increased uh, the volume. During the research and planning stages, we made a number of visits to Newcastle and found the service we working well. The change was felt like a big change is quite minimal for residents in that they will need to spend a little bit more time breaking the cardboard down into smaller pieces so it fit into the bag. Um, we can also provide additional bags free of charge if residents need them, and large cardboard can be cut down, tied, and left at the side of the bin or bag as well. So there are plenty of options. The bags do have a Velcro lid to help keep the material dry and a weighted base to stop them blowing around in the wind as much as possible after they've been emptied. Um, our research has indicated that the bag is not suitable for storing glass cans and plastics for a couple of reasons. Firstly, glass can easily break, which would represent uh, a risk to the collection staff. Secondly, these containers often contain liquids and the bag is not completely waterproof, so that would make it difficult for it to be stored indoors. Uh, in contrast, paper and card is a relatively clean product. The quality of product from the dual stream is markedly higher, as I explained. Although there is some inconvenience to the resident in separating the, the different uh, materials, the benefits are a better quality product at a much lower cost, um, and therefore not impacting the council tax as much. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank all residents of Tamworth who stuck with it, We've got through the teething issues and it has now embedded. They've embraced the new system uh, and we look forward to working together to increase the recycling rate of quality products across Tamworth and Litchfield together. Um, so it's quite a long answer, but I want to give you a decent, detailed answer. I hope it's useful um, and don't hesitate to come back if you need any uh, further assistance. Thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Jay. Um, Councillor Coates, do you have a supplementary? I uh, just want to say thank you for the answer. Um, it was really detailed and thank you. How do residents ask for an additional bag? That's the only thing I'd ask on that one. Cheers. Councillor G. Yeah, they can use the, the numbers on, on the website and there's a, there's a joint waste service uh, site as well. So they can go online and do that. It's quite easy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, we now move on to question number five, which... Uh, uh, Councillor Robert Pritchard wishes to ask the portfolio holder for entertainment and leisure, Councillor uh, A. Cooper, a question. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, decades before our current BMX track was built, Tamworth had a long history of producing regional and national BMX stars. Since, the begin since, the, uh, since being built in 2010, our current BMX track is a facility that has fostered a new generation of BMX riders in Tamworth, as well as bringing many older generations back to, local, to the local BMX community. Uh, I'm proud to have secured the funding for our current track uh, and personally consider it my baby. So now my baby has reached its teenage years and is in need of investment. Um, so the track will still be here in another 13 years time. Will the authority work with Tamworth BMX Track Club to secure funding to deliver some much needed refurbishments to the track? Thank you, Councillor. Um, Councillor Cooper. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the question as well, uh, Councillor Pritchard. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Councillor Pritchard for uh, for his work with the, with regards to the BMX track. It's a, it's a it's a it's a place I often walk past, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we, whilst walking my dog, and it is uh, very popular. It's always used every time I walk past it, um, and it's a, fa a fantastic addition to the uh, to the town and its facilities. And it, you know, it, it, it's it's good to see that somebody has taken so much care over over, over this. Um, and, and let's be honest, teenagers are no fun, are they? And the fact that his baby is now turned into a teenager can never be a good thing. Uh, however, um, the, uh, an inquiry regarding the BMX track and some potential need for maintenance was voiced by Councillor Wadrup uh, on the 5th of June 2023. Uh, as a result of which, Sports Development sent an email to Councillor Wadrup the same day outlining the historical pot of £10,000 that was allocated and retained for this purpose. Councillor Wadrup was informed that there is a balance of 2.4k left for maintenance purposes and that officers would need the BMX Club to make contact with Sports Development or Mark Reeves uh, to detail the maintenance work required. Sports Development also highlighted that the pot of money um, Yes, the budget had been spent and they will work with the club to try and find externally funded monies for future works, but unfortunately there are no guarantees uh, such funding would be available, in which case it may be that the club has to look at using the yearly membership and sessional subscriptions monies towards the purpose of, of, of maintenance. Um, on the 19th of June, Sports Development received an email from Tamworth BMX Club requesting a meeting to discuss the maintenance, to which a reply was sent outlining possible suitable dates. Unfortunately, no response to this email was received. Uh, from a both physical activity and diversionary activity perspective, uh, Tamworth BMX Club is a valuable asset to Tamworth, and as with any other sports clubs or physical activity provider in the borough, Sports Development will gladly support Tamworth BMX Club to attempt to secure extra funding in order to meet the club's objectives. Well, that answers uh, as about as much help as a chocolate fire guard. What I will say is that um, I will meet with um, Councillor Pritchard and we will try and get in touch personally with the BMX club. I'm sure he's got many contacts over there and we will try and uh, find a resolution to this so that we can, we can get a, a much used asset uh, updated and maintained. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Councillor Pritchard, do you have a supplementary? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I say also thanks to Councillor Waldrop for also taking an interest in this issue. Um, for the sake of the minutes, I did put this question in in May, but it's the first meeting we've had where we could ask questions. Um, I wonder if I could just beg the portfolio holders' indulgement if you'd just join me on record as thanking the committee members, uh, both past and present of this club, because they do give up a significant amount of their time uh, to keep this club running, and it really has helped thousands of children over the last decade. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Absolutely. I'm more than happy to put that on record. Um, I'm, I'm often surprised at the, the many clubs around Tamworth that, uh, that do um, un unpublicised work for the town and its people, and, and absolutely that extends to the BMX club in Tamworth. And I'll look forward to uh, the councillor's invite to go down there and try and, uh, try and help them where possible. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Right, the last um, question um, is again from Councillor Robert Pritchard, who wishes to ask a question of the portfolio holder for housing and planning, Councillor Samuel Smith. Councillor Pritchard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, Leaseholders in Jewel are still very worried about the charges they face for roof repairs and how the authority is communicated with residents over charges. Uh, can the portfolio holder uh, please outline what is being done to address residents' concerns on leaseholder charges and what changes to the process the authority will implement to address the leaseholder's concerns. Councillor Smith. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor, and thank you for the question, Councillor Pritchard. Uh, so a very good question to an ex extremely important and pressing issue for the leaseholders. Um, currently, I'm act, uh, actively working with officers and members to carefully assess all available information. <clears throat> My hope is to reach a harmonious resolution to this matter, which takes into consideration the concerns of leaseholders. This can in itself go further to improving the overall communication process. <clears throat> it's an important, it is important that we have a just and resilient uh, system for supporting leaseholders. 
ensuring transparency and fairness to everyone involved. A full report, including a thorough examination of communications, will be presented during the extraordinary council meeting scheduled for the 21st of August. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Pritchard, anything else? Thank you very much. Right, that concludes the questions. Agenda item number five, revised committee allocation due to change in political balance. Uh, there are three changes. Sarah Daniels replaces Councillor Wadrup on appointments and staffing. <coughs> Jan Wadrup replaces Daniels on planning. And Carol Dean replaces Jan Wadrup on nominations and grants. Uh, can I assume that those are okay with everyone and propose that we can accept those? Can I have a seconder? All those in favour? Anyone against? Thank you very much. Right, agenda item number six, um, to receive the outside bodies membership 2023 to 2024. I trust that you've all been um, sent uh, a circular bearing all this information. And I don't know if we need to go into any uh, conversation about it. So can I move that um, that we accept that? And anyone wish to second, Councillor Turner? All those in favour? Anyone against? Thank you very much. Right, agenda item number seven. Uh, this is a petition to see a fully functional council front desk service returned to Tamworth Town Centre. Unfortunately, um, the petition organiser, Councillor Richard Kingston, is unable to be with us this evening. Uh, he's got some pressing matters and uh, therefore I propose a motion uh, to move this item to the next council meeting in September. Can I have a seconder for that, Councillor Woodrup? And all those in favour? Anyone against? Councillor Summers. Uh, thank you, that's, uh, that's passed then. Right, agenda item number eight. Uh, securing of Dostal Park. We have uh, someone who is going to present the position. Uh, her name is Mrs. Ruth Griffiths, and I have great pleasure in inviting Ruth to explain or just to tell us about this petition straight away. In your own time, Ruth, don't worry. Thank you. Sorry, I'm going to wing it a bit because Councillor Oates was meant to present it, so I've just made a few notes. Um, thank you for listening to me. Um, our petition got over a thousand signatures um, and we set it up last August when the travellers moved on to Dostal Park and they were there for quite some time uh, due to the channels of trying to evict them. Um, there was lots of errors and police presence plus a lot of cost in tidying up after they'd left. They caused a lot of mess and disruption for the whole time they were there and obviously after they'd left. Local shops had to shut and police had to be called um, to help with shoplifters. Local people weren't allowed to, well, couldn't use the park. They were verbally abused and intimidated. Dog walkers had to go elsewhere and the children couldn't play on the park, on the playground. Um, uh, I, like many residents who signed the petition, feel that more measures need to be put into place to secure the park or tighter rules that, um, if they do get on, can be moved on a lot quicker. A, a lot quicker. Um, they've tried to get back onto the park again in recent weeks, but luckily were moved on. Um, it just does, it shows that the current measures aren't um, a deterrent to them. Um, the gate is a real security risk and the dirt mounds that have been put down since they came on last time seem to be a bit low. Um, 
I feel if there's more done to secure the places in Tamworth, it would stop them from moving from one place to another. Um, and eventually try, they would avoid this area um, altogether. Um, just, I don't have a problem with travellers and their way of life. It's just when they cause such disruption and mess. And, um, you know, with the, sh with the shops as well, it was, it was really awful the last time. So um, if you could just consider it, that would be thank great. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Right, um, we're going to open this up for debate. Would anyone like to start? Councillor Pritchard. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I carry Councillor Jeremy Oates' apologies. He couldn't be here for this. Um, he uh, really wanted to speak on it, so he sent me a few pointers. He'd asked uh, if I would uh, make them for him. I said, gladly, uh, having looked at his pointers, some of them are better than mine, so I'm not going to credit him, and you can decide which ones were my words and which ones were his. Um, so, um, fully support this uh, petition. Um, the park is a strategic um, open space. It's just strategic beauty spot and it's an extremely busy play area uh, as somebody with uh, children you know many a Sunday I've been on the play area there with the kids uh, not on the play area myself um, sometimes but maybe on the rocks um, and then going for a walk down towards the river enjoying the open space there um, it is our responsibility to do everything we can to protect um, the the open spaces there um, you know I would extend efforts to also protect uh, the broom and the open spaces around Cottage Farm Road uh, because we've got some, some areas which are particularly vulnerable to uh, the travelling community who leave behind a mess. Um, and let's face it, we're trying to protect these spaces from people who are destroying them. Um, so absolute support. Um, in terms of um, uh, moving forward, you know, when these travellers turn up on site, they are cause disruption, they cause uh, upset to residents, um, with zero notice, you know, you, you all of a sudden look out your window uh, and there are caravans on there, you know, residents wit witness people pulling the posts out, cutting uh, chains off, cutting padlocks off. So we do need to do more to increase the protection of these open spaces and in particular this park. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bridgehart. Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, upon hearing this petition being... Um, raise here i did do some some digging with with some of the officers responsible uh, all bollards were replaced uh, in situ over the full length of dostill park some two years ago um, following this two illegal encampments occurred which resulted in some bollards being removed to gain access uh, subsequently a soil mounding was incorporated on the park side of the bollards along the full length of the of the park obviously you know it's been brought to our attention that's quite shallow um the, the, the mounding does not cover the access point to the park as this is required for emergency vehicles access as well as maintenance to the park itself. Uh, no subsequent breaches have occurred since, since the, the, the uh, dirt mounding has been put in place. Uh, in January 2023, Caller Summers requested that the soil mounding was increased to offer a further deterrent for illegal encampments. This work was completed in late February 2023. Again, no further breaches have occurred since this work was carried out. Um, to further enhance the current defences, a native hedge will be planted along the full length of the mound in uh, during the, the winter planting season. Uh, the hedge will be planted in a double line uh, and will take some time to establish. Um, as soon as any illegal encampment uh, vacates a site, the street scene team uh, immediately mobilises resources to commence a clean-up process, which can be quite substantial at a substantial cost to the uh, to the to the Tamworth taxpayer. Uh, recently, uh, an area on the edge of Cannock Chase, known as Milford Common, was used by an illegal encampment. Uh, this site had ditches, uh, mounding, bollards, barriers, and gates, so has a full suite of deterrents, and yet uh, was still targeted for a week. So. Um, Whilst we do, we do endeavour to try and put defences in place, uh, Mr Mayor, obviously if somebody is hell-bent on getting access to a site, they will. Uh, however, um, same with the earlier uh, one with the BMX track, if uh, Councillor uh, Jeremy Oates wants to, uh, wants to meet me down at Dostill Park, I'm happy to go through to see, see what further work we can do in order to provide that protection. I think it's only right, seeing as we've had a, a petition raised with over a thousand signatures. Uh, so obviously there's a, there's a lot of care down in Dostill for it. So thank you for that, that, that petition as well. Um, and I'll, I, will, I will go down there and personally see if there's anything more that can be done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Does anyone else wish? Councillor Doyle. 
I'd like to lend my support to the residents' petition. As a councillor on Stony Delft, we're currently in uh, guests to a number of travellers. Um, I am aware that I've got a colleague here who is from the traveller community, and I say this with the deepest of respect. These people haven't exactly been nice guests. Uh, unfortunately, unlike Dostill, uh, there are no defences on Raygill uh, and the open area between there and Hebden. Uh, I would hope, and I am happy to walk with uh, the portfolio holder around Hebden to uh, establish where defences could be introduced in the very near future. So I look forward to the same sort of support that's been sought for Dostill, for Stony Delft as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doyle. I do a big one. I didn't spot you put your hand up earlier, but um, it wasn't uh, <laughs> intentional, I assure you. Um, Councillor Wood. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I, I'm all supporting, uh, you know, protecting our open spaces and whatnot and making sure they're beneficial for everyone. But are we thinking about those with accessibility issues when we're putting up these defences? Just a quick question on that one. <laughs> It's debate. Um, would you like to make a point? Um, He's already spoken. Yeah, I've already spoken about who the individual objections are to be sponsored at the council. We can do that. Councillor Cooper. Fantastic. Thank you. Look at that. Flexibility. Um, Yes, absolutely. I, I completely agree with you. Um, this, this has to be taken into account. And in fact, it has at Dostill. There, there's obviously. Um, Excuse me, Councillor Wood, um, Councillor Cooper. So we, we have to put in place um, access for uh, um, both people with uh, disability issues and also um, emergency access for, 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 that, for emergency reasons as well. So, uh, yes, there, there are points. Um, if there's a certain site that, that um, you, uh, you want me to take a look at, um, the, the, the invitation extends to yourself. I'm going to be very busy um, over the coming months by the looks of it, but that, that's all good. The invitation extends to yourself. Is there, if there's a certain site that you want me to come down and have a look at so we, we can take a look. It's, it's often hard, isn't it, with, with, uh, with those kind of issues to, to see it through um, some, somebody else's eye, uh, eyes and to see, see the problems there. Oftentimes we think we're doing the best things, but sometimes we're excluding people that we just, we, we just don't, don't foresee. Okay, thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Would anyone else like to contribute? Councillor Wade. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Yeah, I support the petition. Don't get me wrong. But I must point out that there's good and bad in all our communities. Tamworth is littered with litter not just from the travelling community, so we say. So just let's get this into perspective, yeah? What are we going to do with our open spaces? Just build mounds around them all to stop the travellers? I believe this is down to lack of planning and doing something for them. And we can blame the travellers as much as we want. Like I said, there's good and bad in all our communities. But... Lack of planning. They come every year, and every year we go over the same cycle. I think action speaks more than words. And we need to do and address the problem, and not just keep saying, oh, the travellers, the travellers, the travellers. Like I said, there's litter all over Tamworth, and not just from the travellers. Thank you, Councillor Wade. Um, the Deputy Mayor has asked if he can contribute to the conversation. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I remember this uh, specific encampment quite well because I did write an open letter uh, to the <laughs> Chief Inspector uh, about it because of the disruption that was happening at that specific site. Um, I agree with Councillor Wade that, yes, there are good and bad in each... in each other's societies and communities but but that specific encampment was a very disruptive one and bad one for Dostal. Um, it was just as the law was changing um, and we were just getting a 
scheme together with the police and the county council and uh, the borough council that was dealt with by I think uh, Councillor Summers. Since then, uh, there's been a couple of encampments where them new laws have been used, and I'm sure that if they, that they were in place properly and the scheme had been put together with the county at that point, the Dostal encampment would have been moved straight away. So I think that moving forward, apart from the mounds, I, I, I think the law's working a little bit better than it, it did prior. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Dean. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, it's a really difficult uh, problem. As Councillor Wade said, it just keeps coming back. It's something we really need to look at. And the committee that I chair, the ISAG um, group, is going to have a working group. So we're going to be looking at this problem and seeing if there are some initiatives that can be put in place. I'd be quite interested to know what exactly we do provide for the travellers around Tamworth. So I think there's a bit of work there to find out what the travellers need and what we need to stop this being a war between the two factions, because that doesn't help anybody. Thank you, Councillor Dean. Anyone else? Councillor Bain. You know, just support what Councillor Dean has said. Um, we have two ways of approaching this. We can build higher and higher walls, bigger and bigger defences, and we can be um, we can be more and more draconian with the travellers. And I can understand the temptation to do that. Or we can open a dialogue with them and say, what is it? What is the problem? And let us see. I think there was an example that Councillor Wardrop was telling me about where you did that. You opened the dialogue, and actually it turned out much better because they'd had the dialogue. I'm not saying don't build the defences a little better. What I am saying is don't just do that, because you will be stuck in a path of ever more and more defences, and you will never resolve this problem. Thank you, Councillor. Anyone else? Councillor Summers. Thanks. I wasn't going to say anything, to be honest, but... Um, Right. Um, there's an assumption that nothing's being done. Big assumption, there is. Defences are just one part of it. Um, I have done a huge amount of work, and it pained me to see on this position that it seems no one wanted to deal with the problem. Well, I can assure you that that's not the case. We very much want to deal with it. Um, I echo Councillor Wade's thoughts in that there is good and bad in every society and we've got, really have got good and bad in our own society as well that are capable of worse acts than the travellers have ever committed. Um, that to say I'm not defending them. When I was down at the encampment in Dorado, I saw just how bad it could be. Um, the, the mounds uh, seem to be misunderstood. They are there to stop the axles of the caravans from going over. They're not, to, they're not a wall. They're not to stop them from getting across. And as I think has been proven, uh, they, they didn't get onto it. They couldn't. Um, and where we've installed them, um, they've not been able to get back on again. And we're putting those defences across the whole of the borough. It's already happening. The security assessment's been carried out. It's not like none of this has been thought of, dealt with. It is being. Um, Ultimately, as I've said myself a few men, many times, um, the ultimate solution to this, if you want to look at it from a point of view of what the travellers need, is a transit site. Again, already been looked into, already been commissioned, already been asked for. It's already happening. And hopefully within the next year, we'll see the results of that. Now, we don't have um, necessarily anywhere in Tamworth to put one, um, it may be a partnership between us and another local authority uh, to go on land somewhere that's out of the way. And essentially what they will need, having spoken to travellers myself, is water, bins and toilets. Simple as that. Just needs to be a field. And other transit sites that have been built actually charge the travellers to use them. Whether we'll go down that route or not, I don't know. But ultimately, if that transit site is there, police can move them on. 
to that transit site. No ifs or buts about it. So all of this is in hand, very much so. So working groups, fine, are welcome. But you know, given that all of this is already in progress, I do wonder whether conversations are happening to find out what is actually in progress prior to more old ground being churned over first. Again, it, it's, it's just a matter of having a conversation with me. I can tell you everything that's going on. In terms of what the travellers need and our protocols and everything like that, prior to all of these encampments happening this year, I sent out an email to every single one of you detailing the uh, joint protocol and the council's eviction process. Every single one of the councillors in this room had that. And to say that we don't know what's needed and what's happening is um, a bit disingenuous, to be quite honest. All of this is in progress. All of this is happening. If I'm still here to see it through next year, I've no idea, but I'll get my, do my damnedest to get as much done as I can before that and assure people of Tamworth we are, as a council, as a conservative group, doing our best to make sure that our open spaces are protected. And what I will say is um, that in terms of uh, not being able to use your local parks and spaces, I've been to a lot of the encampments this year and people have been using their parks and open spaces without issue whatsoever. They've been taking their dogs a walk, they've been walking across them. I'm not saying that's the case with the Dostal one. It was really bad last year. I'm aware of how bad it was, yeah. So that, that it was, oh, you wouldn't have done it No, I, 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 totally, I, I totally get that. I, I know how bad they can be. I've seen it myself. But, but the fact is, you, you do have to stand your ground as well, and you have to walk and claim those open spaces as your own, because they are. Yeah, look, look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me, we, we can't be having of, a conversation. Not, yeah, I'm not entering, entering into any kind of debate. I realise how frustrating it is for you. But the fact is, um, there's the old adage, sticks and stones, isn't there? I realise, um, you know, people get verbally abused, but that's the extent of it. Um, and I think, as I've said before, we don't live in Disney World. Um, the, the town is... Um, it isn't isn't some kind of Dis Disneyland. It, we do live in a place where our own people can be just as bad as the worst of the travellers. Um, we have to make sure that we're not letting them push uh, push um, us back into our homes. Um, we have to make sure that we do continue to use our parks and open spaces if they turn up somewhere. We have to show them that we will not be intimidated or forced out. It's not the way to go about it. I've been up and spoken to them. Um, most of the time, if they don't have somebody go pick a fight on them, they won't retaliate. They won't have any cause to. Um, quite Can, a lot of times... Councillor Summers, I'm afraid we're running short of time. That's fine. I'll, I'll wrap it up by saying quite a lot of times the police are telling us that, in fact, there's not as much antisocial behaviour reported as there, should, uh, as, there are, uh, as there is reported on social media. Um, that, in fact, when they go around, <laughs> especially at the Stone Adolph camp this time around, um, there's all kinds of rumours and misinformation flying around that just doesn't bode, what, uh, that doesn't ring true when they've gone to visit people when they've gone to the businesses. There's a, there's a lot of fear that gets spread, a lot of misinformation that gets spread that makes the problem sound a lot worse than it actually is. And I ask people to bear that in mind. But uh, thank you for indulging me on that. I had to get that off my chest. I wasn't going to say anything like I said, but um, uh, I felt I had to. Thank you, Mr. Matt. Thank you, Councillor Summers. I'm afraid we've uh, we've run out of time for that particular um, item. And um, as a way forward, uh, Councillor Dean uh, mentioned a few moments ago um, that um, ISAG are looking at this and will be delving into this problem. Um, could I suggest that we propose that ISAG take on this um, item and deal with it as soon as possible if we can get it put on the ice on the agenda as soon as possible and have a good discussion and see if uh, you can come up with any way forward um can i have a seconder for that thank you guess i think and all those in favor
And any against? That's none against. Thank you very much. Any abstentions? That's 10. So it's carried. Thank you, councillors. Right, on to agenda item 9, which is the exclusion of the press and public. Uh, that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meetings and access to information, England Regulations 2012 and Section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves a likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of Schedule 12A to the Act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing the information to the public. Uh, can I have a s seconder? And all those in favour? Thank you. Uh, to those who've just left us, um, thank you for watching. And uh, we'll now close the live stream which I don't think is very live.